was uh, an idea that I was playing around with. I was going to abandon it, um, and I tweeted it out. And our incredible producer and lead, Charlie Bond, I sort of said, I'm going to abandon this. And Charlie just said, no, you're not. We're going to make it. Uh, and that's where the movie came from initially. So it was born on social media. It is a product of the 21st century. And now we're, get, we're going into the into the world premiere. So what yes. are you, what's going to be your signifiers and what are you looking forward to in terms of the Fright Fest audience seeing your movie? I'm really hoping that the Fright Fest audience will go into it with hearts full of love and, and a song in their soul. This is a musical. We've got 12 banging tracks. Uh, and so I'm, I'm looking to see how that lands with a horror audience. I don't know, it's slightly uncharted territory for me. I've never made a musical before. Um, but I'm really hoping there's so much love, so much talent has gone into this all the way through. Uh, I couldn't, you know, the cast and the crew have just been incredible. And I'm hoping that that bursts off the screen in a kind of fizzing gore tornado and connects with the Fright Fest audience. Now, I never thought I'd be asking this question, but is this your first musical? It's, it, it's the first one that is an in-world musical. I've done uh, movies that have original songs in them. Uh, I did a movie called The Devil's Music, which is a fake documentary about the music industry. So we wrote a load of songs for that, but they were all songs that were within the world of the movie. They were still songs. Whereas here, people burst into song. It's a proper, proper damn musical, you know? So you, you are a songwriter as well as a filmmaker? Well, I, I cannot sing and I cannot uh, really play any kind of instrument whatsoever. Um, but luckily I can scratch out some awful uh, primitive noises and they can then be interpreted by people who can actually play instruments and stuff like that. So it starts with a kernel of an idea and then our incredible composer Phil Sheldon and our brilliant musical director James Hamer Morton, um, they sort of take it from there. So it starts with a horrible scratchy little thing from me. Now this is going to go out after you've screened, right. so given Power Tool Cheerleaders is the start of this and Boy Band of the Screeching Dead is the second half of it, do you want to tell us some of the more gloopy, visceral, uh, give us a tease about some of the gloopy, visceral moments in this film. Gloopy, visceral moments. I tried to do a little tally at some point. I realised everything I've ever shot had something bad happening to eyeballs in it. And I sort of thought, oh, maybe maybe there isn't in this. And then I thought about, oh, no, something bad does, does happen to eyeballs in this. We've got power tools, the kind of mess you'd expect with power tools, really. They're never particularly kind to their victims. Um, but we've also got the banging song. So it's the mixture of the two. But yeah, there's some, there's some, there's some sloppiness and some unpleasant this in there as well for the fans you know well look thanks for joining us on Fright Fest TV thank you ever so much Stuart. it's been a pleasure good luck mate cheers thank you very much